No matter your reason for visiting, London has something for everyone. History buffs looking to brush up on the British narrative will delight in the Tower of London. Admirers of art or theatre will praise the National Gallery and the West End Theatre District, while fans of the monarchy can't skip Buckingham Palace. Although London lives up to its reputation as one of the most expensive cities to visit, it does boast an array of attractions that are free to visit, including the Victoria and Albert Museum and Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens, among others. If you're overwhelmed by the amount of things to do, consider signing up for one of the city's top tours to enjoy the guidance of a local. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 best things to do in London. There are some surprises in here, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin though, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel Trip Extreme for more awesome top 10s and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So without further ado, let's count down those top 10. In at 10, Tower Bridge. Along with Parliament and Big Ben, Tower Bridge is London's next must-see architectural marvel, not to mention the most famous bridge that crosses the Thames. Construction on the bridge started in 1886, which means it's practically modern by London standards, but Tower Bridge stands out for its stunning detail and movable roadways that lift up when large ships need to pass through. The views from the bridge are an added bonus. From the elevated sidewalks, visitors get a prime view of the Tower of London, St Paul's Cathedral's iconic dome, and one of the newest additions to London's skyline, the Shard. If you're interested in viewing the city from a higher vantage point, about 137 feet, we're told, consider a tour of the Tower Bridge exhibition. This exhibit will take you to the top of the bridge, equipped with a glass floor, as well as to the bottom of the bridge's engine rooms. However, recent visitors say that those who are afraid of heights might want to forego the tour because of the glass floor. Adults pay £9.80, youths aged 5 to 15 pay £4.20, while children younger than 5 get in for free. That's assuming they don't mind heights. If you have a London Pass, entry to the exhibition is included. Check the website for opening times. Keep in mind, most recent travellers recommended only doing this if you have time to kill or are extremely interested. A walk across the bridge is free and nearly as impressive. Or for a different approach, consider a bike tour across the bridge. Hop off the tube at Tower Hill to stroll across the Tower Bridge. You can also take a bus route numbers 15, 42, 78, 100 and an RV1. At number 9, West End Theatre District. Catching a show in London's West End Theatre District is just as necessary as watching a play on Broadway during a trip to New York City. The quality is some of the best in the UK and the constant mix of new and classic productions with local and world-renowned think Andrew Lloyd Webber, Benedict Cumberbatch, talent, excites both visitors and locals alike. Even if you don't consider yourself much of a theatre devotee, recent travellers said that the atmosphere, specifically near the lively Leicester Square, where many of the theatres are concentrated, is worth a late-night wander. To find ticket deals, head to the official discount booth, TKTS, in Leicester Square. Keep in mind that you'll need to visit the booth the day of the performance, but if you're not picky about what to see or have a more relaxed schedule, the TKTS booths run different deals every day, meaning you could land a great price for a wonderful performance. Booths are open Monday through Saturday from 10am to 7pm and Sunday from 11am to 4.30pm. Access to the area is free. You can reach the area via a variety of tube stations, including Leicester Square and Charing Cross. Next up at number 8, the National Gallery. Sitting in Trafalgar Square, London's National Gallery features a labyrinth interior so large that it requires a colour-coded map to navigate. The museum features paintings in the Western European tradition from the 13th to 19th centuries, including Italian Renaissance masterpieces and French Impressionist works. Among its 2,300 in-house pieces, visitors will find famed paintings such as Botticelli's Venus and Mars and Van Gogh's Sunflowers. Recent visitors love the variety of paintings at the National Gallery, saying that travellers may need more than a day to get a glimpse at all the masterpieces that grace its never-ending halls. They also commend the gallery's café. If reading placard after placard isn't necessarily your thing, you can take a free hour-long tour, which is offered daily at 11.30am and 2.30pm. And if you're worried about keeping the kids entertained while you take in the collections, the National Gallery provides audio tours and maps designed especially for children, some of which come with a small extra fee. At number 7, 
Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens. Once the recreational stomping grounds for King Henry VIII, this long swathe of green stretching from Kensington Palace in the west to Oxford Street in the east is now open to the public and a must-visit for travellers looking for a relaxing moment away from the city's hustle and bustle. Among Hyde Park's meandering foot and bike paths and flourishing flora and fauna, you'll find a new standout attractions that are worth exploring. Watch the swans and boats glide over the serene Serpentine Lake, or rent a vessel yourself. Visit the Diana Princess of Wales Memorial Fountain, or stop by the Speaker's Corner, a site for public speeches and debates since the 19th century, previously used by Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin and George Orwell. If you continue on the Memorial Walk, you'll likely pass through Kensington Gardens, where you'll find the ornate Albert Memorial, the Italian Gardens and the Diana Princess of Wales Memorial Playground. Visitors say the tranquil atmosphere of Kensington Gardens are unparalleled anywhere else in the city, and that they're beautiful no matter the weather. If you don't make a point to visit the area on your own, you'll likely visit while on a guided tour. The closest tube stations to Kensington Gardens include Lancaster Gate and Queensway, Bayswater and High Street Kensington. Hyde Park is free to all visitors and is open year-round from 5am to midnight, while Kensington Gardens opens at 6am daily. The tube stations that surround Hyde Park are Lancaster Gate, Marble Arch, Hyde Park Corner and Knightsbridge. To find out more about seasonal events and other parks around London, visit the Royal Parks website. At number 6, Piccadilly Circus. The portal to London's buzzy West End, Piccadilly Circus lives up to its name. Regularly compared to New York's Times Square, Piccadilly Circus is the meeting place of five busy roads and is the centre of London's hustle and bustle. Whether it's businessmen and women on their way to work in the morning, shoppers en route to the department store clad Oxford Street, just a few streets north, or lively club and bar hoppers passing through at night, Piccadilly is always thrumming with activity. Recent travellers highly recommend a visit to Piccadilly Circus for its proximity to restaurants, shops and nightlife spots, and the energy and excitement it exudes. For the best ambiance, some suggest you visit Piccadilly at night, when the neon lights of the billboards reflect off the Edwardian-era buildings and the Eros statue. A quick disclaimer though, Piccadilly Circus is not an actual circus, as some travellers have expected. Rather, the name refers to the circle, or circus, of which a handful of major roads spoke. Access to the area is free. Several of London's best tours include a stop at Piccadilly Circus. At number 5, Westminster Abbey. This medieval church, graced by many royal weddings and coronations, offers a magnificent peek at London's far-reaching history. Westminster Abbey is pretty much always busy, and the staff keeps you moving at a pretty swift pace, so do a little research ahead of time to avoid missing your personal must-sees. For instance, if you're a bibliophile, consider a visit to the Poet's Corner. This is the final resting place of famed authors Geoffrey Chaucer, Charles Dickens and Rudyard Kipling, among others. If you're fascinated by all the intrigue surrounding the British royalty, you might like to visit the shared tomb of enemies and half-sisters Elizabeth I and Mary Tudor. If you prefer to see the Abbey at your own pace, but still want a little guidance on the history you're encountering, take advantage of the free audio guides online. Alternatively, you can take a 90-minute verger-led tour and see the shrine, containing the tomb of St Edward the Confessor, the royal tombs, Poet's Corner, the cloisters and the nave. If you decide to take this tour, there is an extra £5 charge added to your original admission price. At number 4, Portobello Road Market. Locals and tourists alike tend to adore Portobello Road Market. Located in the posh Notting Hill neighbourhood, made famous by the Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts movie of the same name, the market stretches down the long Portobello Road, considered to be the High Street or Main Street of Notting Hill. The market is filled with merchants of all kinds, more than a thousand to be exact, selling a variety of common flea market items including antiques, art, jewellery, clothing and food. But what stands out about Portobello Market, aside from its adorably colourful location, is its collection of antiques and quintessentially English items. In just a few blocks, visitors can find a welly shop, scores of vintage tea sets, quality London souvenirs and Banksy recreations. The market is also billed as being the largest antiques market in the world. If you have a penchant for fashion, the best sampling is found at the end of the market near the Ladbroke Grove tube stop. There, visitors will not only find the greatest concentration of locals, but a great selection of vintage attire as well. 
Recent visitors loved Portobello Market for its lively atmosphere, wide selection of items and cheap food stalls. Although many lauded the quality found at the food stalls, some urged visitors to check out nearby restaurants, as many serve exceptional British and international fare. Others also advise visitors to pay close attention to their belongings. Portobello Market is not only very crowded, but concentrated on a narrow street, creating an easy opportunity for pickpockets to strike. In at number three, the famous Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace, the London home of Queen Elizabeth II, is open for tour, except for the Queen's private quarters, of course, in the summers and select dates during the winter and spring. On the tour, you'll have access to the 19 state rooms where the Queen and members of the royal family host guests for state, ceremonial and official affairs. Opulently accented with chandeliers, candelabra, paintings by Rembrandt and Rubens, and exquisite English and French furniture, these rooms display some of the most magnificent pieces from the royal collection. Along with the grand interiors, the state rooms are also a witness to history. Those who followed the wedding of Prince William and Catherine Middleton closely will recognise the throne room, which served as the backdrop for the official wedding photographs of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. For tours in the summer, recent travellers suggested taking advantage of the audio guide included with admission so that you hear a detailed history of each room at your own pace. The palace advises you to set aside at least two hours to see the state rooms and that you wear comfortable shoes. While recent travellers advise that you use the facilities prior to the start of the tour, there are no public restrooms available until you reach the garden. No, that's a toilet in the garden. Tour tickets start at £24 for adults, £22 for seniors older than 60 and students, £13.50 for kids younger than 17, children younger than 5 enter for free. You can tour the palace from 9.30am to 6 or 7pm depending on the month. The palace is open from late July to late September. Visitors can also spring for the Royal Day Out ticket, which also includes entrance to the Queen's Gallery and Royal Muse, but it will cost you. If you're not only hoping to quickly pass by this English institution, consider signing up for one of London's best tours. Several make stops at the palace. At number two, the Tower of London. Although its exterior might be grim and even unimpressive, especially when compared to stately Buckingham Palace, the Tower of London's interior is always bustling with activity. The tower, which actually comprises multiple towers, 12 of which can be explored by the public, offers something for everyone. If you're enchanted with the history of the monarch, don't miss the famous Crown Jewels exhibition. Among the items you'll see is the Imperial State Crown, which is still worn by the Queen for each state opening of Parliament, and the Sovereign's Scepter with Cross. If you have more than an hour to spend here, take an entertaining tour led by the Yeoman Warders or Tower Guards. During the hour-long excursion included in your admission ticket, the guards will regale you with tales of the tower's bloody past. Lastly, don't forget to visit the White Tower, an iconic symbol of London's heritage and one of the world's most famous castles. Inside, you'll find the 350-year-old exhibition, Line of Kings, along with artifacts from Henry VIII, Charles I and James II. The majority of travellers say the Tower of London's high admission price and long lines are worth every penny. And some recent visitors strongly recommend attending the free tour put on by the Yeoman Warders. And finally, at number one, the British Museum. The British Museum is both an architectural beauty and a trove of some of the world's most noted antiquities. In fact, many travellers say it's the best museum in all of London. What's more, it's free to visit. From the Rosetta Stone to the Elgin Marbles to the Lindo Man, the British Museum is a history buff's dream containing artefacts in the millions. The immense collection can make an initial museum visit seem overwhelming. Pick the exhibits that most interest you and plan return trips if you feel so inclined to do. If you want a little help navigating the museum's 8 million objects, consider tagging along on a guided tour. Several, including the daily eye-opener tours and weekly lunchtime gallery talks and Friday evening spotlight tours are free. You can also book a highlights and special early morning tour for £14 and £30, respectively. Audio guides which cost £7 are also available to rent daily. And there you have the top 10 best things to do in London. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Trip Extreme for more fantastic top 10 lists. See you next time, travelers.